right, so this is our budget special uh, edition today where uh, we will begin the week by focusing on taxpayers and the kind of demands or expectations they have. You all know that we have two tax structures right now, the old tax structure where you get benefits as per ATC and other sections and you have a new tax structure where you do not get any tax benefits or SOPs but you have a lot of money in your hand. So, uh, uh, talking about uh, expectations, uh, we know uh, since a lot of years ATC has not been touched, no more changes over there and also uh, a lot of people although are going towards a new tax uh, slab or the new tax structure, uh, should we be expecting any kind of tax swaps or uh, any kind of relief on that front? Uh, let's get on board our guest today, Ketan Dalal, Managing Director, Catalyst Advisors. Ketan, hi. Uh, good evening and welcome to The Money Show. And uh, Ketan, although it is a vote on account, uh, uh, we all know that 2019, also an interim budget, we got a lot of uh, surprises from the Modi government and a lot be, a lot is being said on the same lines to be happening in this vote on account also. So, talking about uh, uh, announcements for a, for, a, for a tax person or for a salaried person, uh, 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 the analysis so far is such that 60% of the crowd is still with the old tax structure. Okay, although uh, the new tax structure has uh, a, a more tax slabs and you know uh, you get more disposable income in your hand, it seems that a lot of people, uh, a lot of taxpayers, salary class, uh, they are opting more towards the old tax structure also because you get the benefit on home loan interest deduction over there. So uh, looking at this number, uh, uh, should we be expecting any changes or any kind of additions, uh, especially on the home loan interest deduction? because that is something which a lot of people are anticipating and even sources are saying so we also have other other uh, expectations which might be uh, coming you know which might be we, we might see them coming as far as our taxpayer is concerned but specifically about home loan because this is something that's been untouched since a very long time Ketan yeah so Kavita as you yourself mentioned you know this is more like a put on account but yes one cannot rule out the possibility of some stops uh, within the electoral constraints so I think I'll let me broad base your question of home loans into three parts, uh, Kavita. One is in relation to housing, second is in relation to education, and third is medical. And all of these are significant, uh, you know, uh, sort of pressures on, on the wallet. And the home loans, of course, is very important, as you said. And the amount of home loan deduction is very, very small. If I remember rightly, one and a half lakhs, that's very small. And uh, I'm not sure whether to call it an expectation, but certainly it's a demand that it should be increased. But I think the broader issue, as you said, is also that 60% are under the old regime. And you know, when you use the word salary class, Kavita, I think it's important for us and for your viewers to understand that salary class is a very generic term. You know, a person drawing 5 lakhs is a salary class and a person drawing 5 crores is also a salary class. And the number of people in the higher slabs is now slowly increasing. So with that, with the 10 lakh minimum threshold for the highest rate to uh, kick in is also very unreasonable. Uh, I think it really needs to be increased. And I think the rate also of 36% is 39% actually, because you don't claim a deduction is also very high. So I think it's not just a question of you know home loans, but I think one has to look at it holistically. But I'm not sure how much can be done or will be done in the in the in the on February one. But certainly one hopes that when the new government is in place, so say June or July, one would be hoping that uh, there is there is a reduction in rates, there is an increase in slabs, and not only education, sorry, not only the home loan, but also education and medical are are also dealt with uh, as as a sort of holistic package for individuals. I wouldn't just say salary class. Mm -hmm. Ketan, a lot of analysts and reports are also saying that, you know, uh, looking at the interest towards the old tax regime, uh, the government might just also uh, look into increasing the basic exemption limit. Uh, uh, we also uh, uh, got an exclusive on NPS because uh, uh, that's uh, that, that's something, uh, uh, this pension scheme is very close to the Modi government also. Uh, so a lot of tweaking uh, and especially, you know, having the option of guaranteed pension uh, can also be 
included. Uh, so these kind of uh, 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 these, these kind of reports uh, in line with the kind of demand we've been seeing from taxpayers and also ATC Ketan. You know, it's been a very long time since uh, uh, we've seen any more addition as far as investment instruments are concerned in this particular tax benefit section. Uh, it's it's been untouched. It's it's just gone. Uh, 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 it, it's never been addressed in addressed in terms of increasing the the uh, 1.5 lakhs uh, uh, limit as well. So. Uh, can we expect something on these lines? I mean, obviously, we can't be saying something on, on short, short basis right now, but it's been a long pending demand from a taxpayer. You know, Kavita, uh, you know, if you see the trend of tax legislation over the last few years, and it is not only for individuals, but also for corporates, the whole trend is towards simplifying the law. And the more exemptions you put in, the more complexities you create. I think that the better way to address it is to reduce the rates of tax rather than doing all these complexities. Having said which, you know, as a boost to savings, so let's say uh, PPF, okay, for example, uh, one of the reasons that the PPF scheme has been successful has certainly been 8 IC, without doubt. And there again, the limit of one and a half lakhs, and as you know very well, Kavita, it's not only for PPF, but it's for a whole basket of things. And the section goes on and on and on for five pages. And by the time you come to the end, you forget what the beginning said. It's just too complex. So one, I think it is better to reduce the rates of tax. And as I said, I don't know whether that's an expectation or a demand. And I think it's both. But I think if at all, you know, one wants to go down the path of giving incentives, I absolutely agree that one and a half lakhs is neither here nor there. Uh, particularly because it's for a whole basket of things and it is not just for PF or PPA. So, but as I said, I think the better thing would be to reduce the, the rates of tax without doubt uh, because I think that will also make the law simpler and make it more equitable because remember that even, even corporates are taxed at 25% now and to have a 39% rate at the maximum level and for a tax rate maximum to start at 10 lakhs is uh, very aggressive to my mind. Person is definitely more than corporate. So, 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 Ketan, uh, what would be your demand or your expectation? I mean, uh, even you are a taxpayer, right? So, uh, what is it that you would want from the FM as a taxpayer? You know, this, we are talking of, of um, the money show and individual. So, I'll restrict myself to, to that. So, I mentioned already. I think the tax rate at thirty nine percent maximum, and that is, and, and the maximum starting at. O, just over 10 lakhs is very high. And I think the slab of 10 definitely needs to be increased, whether it is to 20 lakhs or 15 lakhs or 25 lakhs is, is something which I'm sure they'll have to do the budget arithmetic on that. The, the second uh, point is that if at all you're giving incentives for savings, you know, you have to increase it. But as I said at the beginning of this conversation, Kavita, I think the three things that need to be addressed one, you already said in the beginning, one is the home loans part. Second is medical and the third is education. Because these three things are causing the maximum drain on the pocket. That's one part of it. The second, if you look at a completely different thing, let's say ESOPs. ESOPs in between for many years when the market was not doing well, were quote unquote out of fashion. Now again, ESOPs have become important. And the taxability of ESOP, because this is also a matter of individual taxation, because it has been repeated. The taxation of ESOP, there has been a long-standing demand that you cannot have a tax at the stage of exercise of an option. Because at that stage, you're not getting money. You should have it at the stage of monetization. You know, so there's a whole bunch of things like this. But then there is a third item which I want to pick up. Whilst we are talking of individual tax, remember, individuals often collaborate, you know, in the form of partnerships or LLPs. So let's say... Uh, a professional or even a freelancer wants to get together with another freelancer. Now, it may not seem like individual tax, but we need to recognize that two individuals coming together and doing, or three individuals coming together and uh, carrying out a profession or a business in the form of an LLP or partnership. That rate is also 36% compared to 25 for corporates. And I think the reason is that the government seems to believe that because the dividend is taxable in the hands of the shareholder, whereas the LLP and partnerships are a single point taxation. Therefore, the 36 is justified. But I do not think it is that justified. And I think LLPs, and there are reasons for that, but LLPs, 
and partnership rates of tax also i think need to come down because if you really see that is actually nothing but another form of individual taxation it's an individual being taxed in a different form uh, because that the way he is his commercial needs is to carry on his profession or his business so i think this i think would be so one is rates of tax second is partnership and llp rate of tax third is a minimum slab rate needs to be go up fourth is esop tax and fifth i would say is as i said some kind of reliefs for home loans education and medical apart from this uh, ketan if we have to focus on uh, structural changes in nps and introduction of minimum guaranteed pension scheme uh, uh, how much do you think uh, this will make nps as a retirement product really attractive okay uh, so we know there are tax benefit as per atc and atc cd that you get uh by investing in nps but the withdrawal is taxed in the sense uh, uh you have to buy an annuity which uh, will be taxed when you get it in your hand so apart from that if there is an option of getting a minimum pension minimum guarantee pension do you think this will really add on to this entire product and uh, nps you know the government is also trying to make it very investor friendly but so far has not been very successful okay as an investment instrument uh, an addition of a minimum pension guarantee scheme will will will, will get all the eyeballs at the need where well, i think so now whether the arithmetic works out for the government and what are the fiscal implications i would not be able to say but i think uh, th- from just if you see from an ask perspective or an attractiveness perspective kavita certainly the minimum uh, pension will will uh, minimum guaranteed pension will help but you know there is one additional point i want to make about nps kavita you know you have an nps 1 and an nps 2 the nps 2 does not involve an annuity it functions like a mutual fund but the nps2 although functioning like a mutual fund does not have the tax benefits of a mutual fund so it may also be necessary to address nps2 although really nps1 is a much it affects a much larger proportion you by the way you cannot create an nps2 unless you have an nps1 so you can create an nps1 with say a uh, One lakh of account, and you may have one crore so, of rupees. So, Ketan, you mean the tier one, tier two account under NPS? Correct. Tier one, tier two. Okay. Sorry, that okay. that is the correct correct terminology. Correct. Right. That's true. Right. 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 Yes. All right. So, so I did ask you a question on uh, if you were a taxpayer and if you had to present your demands. Let me also put this question to you. If you were a finance minister, what kind of budget would you present? <laughs> I have already said that, Kavita. I am not the <laughs> finance minister, and there are electoral constraints, of course. But more importantly, the fact that the elections are coming up and this is more likely to be a vote on account. I think many of the things that we discussed, Kavita, to be realistic. and not to be overly optimistic i suspect when well, i hope some of this is addressed on february 1 but i suspect that the majority of this if at all can be addressed only when the full budget is presented and not when a interim stroke vote on account kind of budget is presented as will be the situation this friday so let's see what happens on first fair ban in the meantime thank you so much ethan for being on the show and helping our viewers with this today thank you so thank much thank you kavita thank you so much Let's slip into a quick break and post that. Let's take your mutual fund portfolio related queries, and uh, our live callers will be joining in. In case you also want to send us your questions, you can WhatsApp your questions. Also, email us. Welcome back. You're watching the Money Show with me. Kavita Thapliyal and there are plethora of funds available in the market to invest your hard-earned money in. But how do you assess which is the right fund for your portfolio? What are the criteria that one should look at? And to help you navigate through this maze today, I have with me Hemant Tustegi, Wise and West. And also, uh, do not forget to send us your portfolio queries on our WhatsApp number, which is eight six five seven nine seven four five seven one. You can also email us your questions on the Money Show at etnow. tv. Hi, good evening, Hemant, and welcome to the show. Uh, we also have our viewers connected today. on the phone line and the first question is coming from hatab from bangalore uh, hi good evening sir thank you so much for sending us your question i believe you have a couple of funds in your portfolio already mira asset large cap parag parag flexi cap hdfc mid cap uh, nippon india small cap and icici pro value discovery uh, the uh, the sip amount is 30000 yes good afternoon madam uh, this is correct yes uh, currently i'm investing 30000 per month All right. Uh, all right. Into all, into all so, the portfolio. Yeah. 
could you also tell me your uh, investment duration or the time horizon that you want to stay invested for? Yeah, I am I am uh, trying to continue it for as long as I can, maybe 15 plus years. 15 plus years. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's quickly go to Hemant. Hemant, what will be your suggestion as per the fund mix? Well, Kavita, clearly, like he, as he mentioned, his time horizon is uh, you know at least 15 years. So obviously, investing in equity fund through SIP is, is the best strategy because when you are investing for such a long time horizon, uh, you know your aim should be to uh, earn positive real rate of return, which is what equity can give. So I think in terms of strategy, is doing all right. Uh, overall, I would say the fund selection is quite good. But I think it's equally important to understand that uh, the allocation to different market segments should be such that there is the right balance and you kind of benefit from the potential of uh, all the segments, uh, market segments. In this case, what, I'm see, what I see is that there is a large cap fund, there is a flexi cap fund, and there is also a value fund. All these three funds are investing predominantly in the, in the large cap. So almost you can see that 20,000 out of 30,000 uh, is going into the large cap. Maybe some exposure to mid cap may be there, but broadly you can see that allocation to large cap is much higher. I think there is a scope to actually reduce the slight exposure to large cap and maybe increase to the mid cap. There are two ways of doing it. Either you can kind of, uh, you know, take out money from there and go into a pure uh, uh, mid cap fund. But I think better thing would be to create, to keep some flexibility and go for a larger mid cap fund. So my recommendation would be that you can consider stopping his SIP from the large cap fund, uh, which is the Canada Tobacco large cap fund, and uh, invest that money into a, a larger mid cap fund, which could be uh, Moti Lal for large and mid cap. I think that would be the good strategy. Create the right balance between exposure to uh, different market segments. All right, uh, Hemant, let's move on to our next viewer's question, which is from Karthike in Tamil Nadu. And he's, uh, uh, he's a first time investor in mutual funds and he's also confused about uh, the fund selection. And uh, he is actually planning to have a post retirement corpus of almost five crores. And uh, he wants to start an SIP of 2000 rupees right now. He's 36 years old. And uh, he wants you to suggest him uh, the right kind of fund mix for 20,000 per month. Well, again, I think looking at the time horizon, uh, investing in equity fund would be a good option. So as I mentioned, I think it's important to ensure that your allocation to different market segments should be such that you have the right balance and also benefit from all the market segments. So maybe uh, a, a combination of a multi-cap fund, which could be Kotak multi-cap fund, uh, a mid-cap fund, which could be uh, the Quant India growth fund, and a small cap fund, which could be Quant small cap fund, and a flexi-cap fund, which could be for flexi cap. So maybe invest 5,000 each in these four. And as and when he decides to increase the amount, he need not actually add any further fund from this. He can actually increase the amount in these four funds. I think uh, with that, it's time up on the show today. Thank you so much, Eamon, for being on the show and helping our viewers with their queries. And on that note, uh, uh, time to sign off, but I'm going to leave you with our WhatsApp number and email ID where we keep waiting for your portfolio queries and uh, we can answer, we get them answered live on our show to our experts. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.